I, I'm trying to make the right investments. I want to set myself up for life, you know. I'm um, putting it away, and I'm, I'm looking into some investments now. And um, I just want to be the right, do the right thing. I don't want to be like a football player that would be like bankrupt in, in three years, say. My obsession, I think, is like jewelry and diamonds. I love it. Well, my whole entire life, I loved it. I love jewelry. I still have the same jeweler today that I had back in the day. I'm just buying on a different caliber of stuff now. I'm proud to be an Italian. Like, um, I'm proud to be an Italian family, and I, I don't represent all Italians. I only represent yeah. myself. I want to be like one of the top DJs in the world. Yeah, I love DJing. Um, maybe put out some songs, produce, get in the studio, stuff like that. Put out some CDs and stuff. I want to gear all my stuff really towards my career, and that's music. That's what's most important is your family. Yeah. So to them, I know it's a crazy, crazy lifestyle. Sometimes when I come home, I just want to rest, but they want to hear the stories and they want to know what's going on. They watch and they're your family and that's where you come from and you never forget that. Yeah. I remember that. Look, he sat right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> he was actually a nice guy. He seemed like he was. Really down to earth. I never did, I never did photo shoots before. It's fun. I remember that day. Uh, no, I like the Latin one especially. The last time I said I love you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this was a good one. I remember the interview as, as well. Not a spike out of place, just want to point that out. He set it all up, and I mean, I had no idea. I just heard this loud volume of music and all that. <laughs> I was like, what is that? You know? So, of course, you want to encourage him, and then you just hope that, you know, the neighbors don't complain. <laughs> it's like any high school student, I was kind of undecided on what I really wanted to do. Yes. Um, and jumping into the car business, I started off at uh, the dealership I worked at for like 10 years. Yeah. Started off um, washing cars, then I moved up to running the recon department, then I was lot boy, then I was service, service advisor, I went to parts, then I did quality control, then I was a buyer, went to salesman, then I ended up being a used car manager. So, but I was always DJing at night. Dealership by day, DJ by night. The economy kind of went down, I wanted to get out of the car business and I always wanted to be like a firefighter. Yeah. So I went and got my EMT. I got a random message on MySpace one day. It was a casting director. She says, Paulie, we love your look for a show we're doing. I know you think this is MySpace. You might think it's skeptical, but leave us your contact information. So for some reason I did. They called me. I got a cold phone call from LA. And it says, yeah, we want to send down a camera crew and, and film a day in your life. And I'm like, okay. Got to my house, they're like, this is unreal. So that was great for them, I guess. And so they came down, filmed my life, and like six months later they said I got on the show. They said they just like my look. It had nothing to do with being a DJ. Me being a DJ yeah. is only, I just put that out there. I always had like a, um, like a spiky, spiky hair look. It yeah. was just um, it was different. When I was at the dealership, when I was used car manager, um, I still had this a blowout, but it was like a control blowout. Like it wasn't crazy like this, so I called it the gentleman's blowout. The gel's so serious, it's like, a, it's like I almost glued a gel. It's spiker. They sent it to me by the case now. <laughs> okay. The company I heard was going under until the show. <laughs> <laughs> When you're a DJ, you always wish to be a famous DJ, but the odds of that actually happening doesn't happen. So I'm a realist. I know that that's not reality. You can't. I mean, odds of somebody making it as a DJ is very slim to none, but I love doing it. It's crazy, right? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's crazy. But it's fun for me. I didn't really do it for the money. Still is. Yeah. yeah that's why, like, all this, it's been a, such a blessing for me. I'm living out, like, my dreams right now, and I'm doing what I love to do all over the world. It's like, this is insane. I can't believe it. And then I always joke around with my friends. I'm like... Remember when we were DJing in Rhode Island and, and, and promoting and, and hustling to make like nothing? I got rims on my car, music, all for free. I don't, I don't even pay for much anymore. Any gym in the world you can go into and say, hey, yeah. let me Oh, in. yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They just want a picture. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, they told me like the concept of the show is like meeting perfect strangers and living them with them in like a show house in Jersey. Yeah. And I just looked at it as like a vacation. And I told my friends, like, I think I'm filming some kind of show. I'll be back in like a month or so. And I get back and I'm like, yeah, I filmed some show, like it was no big deal. And it was just cool. I'm like, oh, look at this. It's crazy to see this kid on TV. And still, we didn't know it was going to take off the way that it did now. Yes. I go to the store, like, I can't do stuff by myself anymore. That's the only thing that changed. My security, I have, I have to have full time security. Like, I can't go by myself. He can control it. He'll be like, all right, girls, one at a time, and then we'll take the picture and stuff like that. Okay. I love to do that, okay, too. And, um,. I'm like, you guys gotta get me out of here. I'm, I'm at the college and I, and I can't leave. And there's, there's too many people here. I gotta get out of here. They're like, all right, we'll be right there. And they pulled, um, Mike pulls up in his car right up front where the dorm was. Jerry came in, grabbed me. I put like a bear hug around him. He got the, the flashlight. He's like, move, move, move. Got everybody out of the way. Got me out of there. Now, here's something where I didn't think it was gonna be any big of a deal. It's gonna be quiet. It's gonna be fine. The next day, um, 
I see there's a video, somebody videoed it. Yes. And um, so the video's all over the place. You have like four hours to kill. Go on my fan page and you can see the pictures that they uploaded from Halloween. Yeah. And there's millions of them, of the, all the kids that dressed up like me. Even other DJs dressed up like me. Uh, have you got any marriage proposals? Oh, every day. Every day? Oh, more than 50. A day? Yeah, on oh, Twitter, on Facebook, yeah, every day. The girls see that you're wanted, so they want to see what the fuss is about, or, or for some reason they like that. Now, what I'm doing now is a little different. I actually get to work even harder to be a DJ because they're booking me in like um, like the best play, the best venues in the world. I'm in places like Vegas, Chicago, all the biggest venues, and so I have a chance to prove to the world that I can actually DJ. So when I when I do that, they're like, "Wow, this kid can actually spin." MTV um, gave me the audience to do that. When you're the top talked about thing, people are gonna just wanna um, put a magnifying glass on you and just yeah. basically rip you apart when. I don't see us doing anything wrong. The only thing difference between us is like you're, we're being videotaped and we're on we're on TV. Film 24/7, so it takes 300 hours of film to make one episode. When you go to the bathroom, they don't follow you in the bathroom. They don't want to see that unless you go in there with more people. That's a party. <laughs>